it's totally fine. I have a lot more stories. That you do. Yeah. <laughs> that no. you do. Guilty as charged <laughs> with the stories. <laughs> Hi there, everybody. Welcome once again to I've Got Something to Say. This is the podcast that, A, I'm glad you're listening to, and B, features me telling stories from my life. This week's episode is called Hold the Onions. This is an interesting day. Um, something has happened that's captured the, the world, or at least the Western world's attention, and that is the uh, the Cathedral Notre Dame, I hope I'm saying that correctly, in Paris, uh, caught fire. And it, people have gone crazy over this, and, and I get it. I mean, this is, what, like an 800-year-old cathedral, um, very significant and important to the Catholic Church, but even more so than that, just the fact that it's such an old building and and there's incredible uh, artwork inside and stained glass and and people are mourning um, the loss of at least part of it and at this point I don't even know how much is salvageable I know most of the roof was burned and I've I've not heard in a while but it got me to thinking about the the perspective on time and permanence and maybe the principle of impermanence. Uh, as I was talking with someone about it today, we were discussing like, you know, this is 800, almost a thousand years old and it's being destroyed. And that's horribly sad, you know, because for those of us on the earth at this time, it's like, it's been there forever because it, it preceded all of us. But then if you look at it from a different perspective, through a different lens, 800 years in terms of the history of the earth is nothing it's a blink of an eye so i don't say that to diminish the significance of losing this incredible historic landmark and and religious landmark to a lot of people um but just to offer up a different perspective and it started me thinking how quick this life is you know we're told in the bible life is like a vapor and a mist and it disappears and we move on and so it got me to thinking about other things that are transitory and impermanent in this life, such as humans. And as I was going down this rabbit hole of impermanence today, it dawned on me that one of my very best friends, Patrick Barnhard, died almost exactly 10 years ago now. He died in July of 2009. Here we are in April of 2019. And I can't believe it's been 10 years since that happened. And I'll never forget that night uh, before he passed away. I was at home watching TV. It was probably about 10 o'clock. And I get this phone call. And I see that it's Pat calling me on what I'm sure was a giant brick phone at the time. And it'd been a long day. And I just sat down to watch TV. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll let it go to voicemail. I'll talk to Pat tomorrow. I just want to chill. So I sat there watching TV. He called. I listened to the voicemail. He's, hey, Chris, tomorrow me and my dad and Tom are going to go fishing at Blue Springs Lake. Come by if you want to join us. We're going to try and get the boat in the water about 6 o'clock. So, okay, cool. Well, if the day works out, then I will go put the boat in the water. The next morning, I'm on my way to work. It's probably 10 after 7, some, something like that. And my phone rings, and I see it's Dwight Barnhard, Pat's dad. And I answer the phone, and Dwight gives me the devastating news that Patrick had died unexpectedly at 41 years old the night before. So here's a guy. We had grown up together, and I mean from the crib. We went to the same church. Our parents were good friends. They, they went out to dinner. They traveled together. Pat and I went all through school together. In college, we were roommates through undergrad and graduate school together. We were in each other's weddings. Um, after we got married, we traveled together. Pat had been a part of my life for as long as I could remember. He was one of my brothers. And so here's this guy taken way too young. And it, it as I said, was just devastating news. Um, but one of the things after he died that Dwight, Patrick's dad, said to me 
um, has stuck with me to this day. And he talked about how when Pat was a little boy and they would go to McDonald's, when Pat would order a hamburger, he didn't like the onions on it. And this was back in the day when special orders upset people. So you couldn't go up, you know, at McDonald's and get a, a hamburger without onions because it was already it was there. It was under the infrared lights. They gave it to you and you just had to deal with it. And so Dwight talked about how frustrated he was that he would, you know, have to scrape Patrick's onions off of his hamburger for him. But after Pat's death, he's telling me, you know, Chris, I look back on that and think, why did I waste all that time being frustrated about that? And what would I give right now to have one more opportunity to scrape onions off a hamburger for Patrick if he were here right now? And so I, I don't tell this story to be morbid, but to me, it's very poignant and it's a good reminder of the the impermanence of life and the fact that we are not guaranteed or promised anything other than what we have in front of us right now. So when we choose to react with frustration or anger or emotions um, that are less than our best selves, we're really um, not honoring all that we only have, which is this moment. So um, just a, a little reminder to uh, do your best to be here now, be in the moment, be with the people you love and give them your best every opportunity you have because you don't know when it's going to be your last. Well, that does it for this rather morose episode of I've Got Something to Say. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tune in next time as well. I um, want to thank the good folks at KCTK Radio for making this podcast possible, and especially Paul. Uh, he does the recording. He does the producing. Uh, he's good moral support and just really an all-around good guy. If you don't know him, you should give it a shot. We'll talk to you next time. <laughs>